here coming to you with a lesson about the one universal scale pattern that you can use to solo and improvise anywhere on the neck in any key. So this is going to be a really fun lesson and it's going to allow you to uh, start to be creative with your guitar playing, start improvising, start creating some guitar solos and melodies and it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so before we dive into learning that scale, let me just first explain what scales are and why they are important. Uh, a lot of times when I mention scales, I see students kind of eyes uh, glaze over because uh, when you hear scales, sometimes it feels like one of those boring, kind of tedious things uh, that isn't really a whole lot of fun. But hopefully I can change your mind about that in this video. Scales are a ton of fun, and uh, basically you can use them to really be creative with your guitar playing and, uh, and just have fun with it. So uh, let me just kind of explain what a scale is and how they're actually used. So a scale is essentially just a series of notes that sound good together. And a scale could be in any key. You could have a scale in the key of C, in the key of A, in the key of B, uh, in the key of D, uh, so on and so forth. But ultimately, a scale is just a set of notes that are going to sound good together. And the way we learn scales on guitar is we just learn them in terms of finger patterns. So uh, we're going to learn one finger pattern today that is really versatile, that you can use anywhere on the guitar. But there are actually uh, essentially five different scale patterns that we want to learn uh, if we want to be able to basically play along the whole neck of the guitar. So for this uh, lesson, if you want to just stick with the one scale that we're covering today, that's totally fine if this is a little bit new to you. Uh, or if you want to learn some additional scales, uh, check the links in the description. I'm going to have um, some information in there for you and some diagrams where you can learn some additional scales. Uh, then you can take these same principles and, uh, and apply it to those scales as well. But uh, again, a scale is just a series of notes that sound good together, and we can take those notes and use them to create guitar solos and melodies uh, and really cool lead riffs. So how are scales used in real music? Well, one way to think about it is that the foundation of basically any song is uh, a chord progression. So essentially any song can be broken down into a series of chords, uh, and then that is kind of gives us our foundational layer. And the scales can kind of be thought of as the second layer on top of that. So we have this foundation of chords, and then we can use the scales to create things like guitar solos uh, or even vocal melodies. So when you hear a singer uh, singing a song, what they're doing is they're basically just singing and hitting notes uh, from a scale. So that's a really great way to kind of simplify it and, and look at it from a, a kind of an easier uh, standpoint is that the foundational layer of music is chords and that that second layer uh, is essentially scales and those scales can be used for a lot of different things from singing a melody to creating a guitar solo. So let's go ahead and learn that really versatile scale that can be used anywhere on the guitar and then again if you want to take that a little further you can learn more scales in the description below. Let's go ahead and learn that scale now and, uh, and we're going to see how that works and how we can change keys with it and play anywhere on the neck and I'm going to give you some tips as well on how to improvise and create some cool guitar solos. Let's get into it. Alright everyone, so here we are on the guitar. We're ready to learn our very versatile universal scale pattern that you can play anywhere on the neck in any key. I'm going to go ahead and put the diagram on screen for you. You're going to notice that this diagram is not a tab. Uh, and a tab is basically where we uh, write things down in terms of the strings and the frets of the guitar. But I don't want you to learn this scale in terms of playing it on certain frets because when we start to change keys, we're going to be moving to different frets on the guitar. So rather than learning it in terms of the frets, we're going to learn it in terms of the finger pattern. And then that pattern can be moved uh, and played anywhere else on the guitar as well. So with this diagram, you can actually start anywhere. So let's go ahead and just pick a spot to start. We're going to start on the fifth fret of the low E string. So go ahead and put your index finger on the fifth fret of the low E. And we're going to be playing this in fifth position. And what that means is it's just kind of telling you how to line your fingers up. So if we're in fifth position, we're going to start with our index finger on five. Our second finger would then cover any sixes that we, we might see. Our ring finger would cover any sevens. And our pinky would cover 
and E8. So we have that span of four frets that we're covering. Um, and again, we're starting with our index finger on five in this case. So the way we read this diagram is we simply go string by string, uh, left to right. So we start by reading the low E string, and we play the notes that we see there, represented by those dots. Then we play the notes on the A string, then the D string, and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and learn this scale pattern and this finger pattern, and we'll take it note by note here. So again, with the diagram, uh, you could start on any frets. We're just going to choose to start on the fifth fret for our example here. So we're starting on the fifth fret of the low E. And we can see that that's kind of our first dot there, right? And then our next dot on the low E string is, is uh, three frets away on the eighth fret in this case. So we're going to use our pinky for that one. So our E string notes are indexed to pinky. And then we're going to go to the A string. We're going to do index to ring finger, which in this case is the fifth and seventh fret. Then we're going to go index to ring finger on the D string as well. Index finger to ring finger on the G string, five to seven in this case. Index finger to pinky on the B string and index finger to pinky on the high E string. So again, I want you to think of that in terms of a finger pattern, not necessarily the frets. So let's go over that pattern one more time. We've got, starting on the low E string, index finger to pinky, then index finger to ring finger, index finger to ring finger on the D string, Index finger to ring finger on the G string. Index to pinky on the B string. Index to pinky on the high E string. You could also play that backwards. You can go pinky, index, pinky, index, ring, index, ring, index, ring, index finger, pinky, index finger. So go ahead and try and get comfortable with that finger pattern. You can start on the fifth fret as our example here. And then I'm going to show you how to identify the root notes of this and change keys. And I also just want to mention that if you already know that scale pattern, that is okay. Stick around for the rest of this video because I'm going to talk about some other tips like how to improvise in there and how to change keys with that. Uh, and then you can also apply this to other scale patterns as well. So all these principles will apply to any scale pattern. But we're just going to use this one as our example today because it's basically the most versatile and the most common scale. Uh, and then you can expand from there. So go ahead and try and get that scale under your fingers. And then let's move forward and talk about how to identify what key we're playing in. All right, so hopefully you got that scale down. You feel kind of comfortable playing through that. Make sure you're using the right fingers. That's super important. But now let's go ahead and identify what key we're playing in and where the root notes are on this scale. So we have two root notes in this scale. One is a minor root note, and one is a major root note. And this gets into the idea that there are relative major and minor keys. And what that means is that you can use this one scale, this one pattern to play in a minor key, and it'll also work for a major key. So you're kind of getting a two for one deal essentially. This scale, this one scale will work in two different keys, and then we can move that around anywhere else on the guitar to play in any other key that we want. But let's go ahead and start by identifying the root notes. So the first root note it's actually just the very first note of the scale, that index finger on the low E string. In this case, we're using the fifth fret as our example, but it could be, again, anywhere on the neck. But whatever that first note of the scale is, that index finger on the low E string, that is the minor root note. So whatever note this is, that would be the minor key that this scale would work with. So let's go ahead and identify that. So if we want to identify the fifth note of uh, the fifth fret of the low E string, we have to figure out what note that is. Now I have a whole video explaining how to identify any note on the guitar. Maybe check that out if you want some additional information on how to find out what note you're playing. 
but I'm just going to kind of go through that relatively, relatively quickly here. Uh, so if we want to identify this note, fifth fret of the low E string, we're going to count through our musical alphabet. We start with open E. We're just going to count through the notes on this string. The first fret is an F, then an F sharp, then a G, then a G sharp, and then this fifth fret is an A note. So if we play this scale starting on the fifth fret of the low E string, we're playing in the key of A minor. That's an A note, and that's our minor root note. The first note of the scale is the minor root note. So if we wanted to play in, and solo in the key of A minor, we could play that scale right here on the fifth fret. Now there's also a major root note, and that note is going to be the index finger of the G string. So again, it could apply to any fret. In our example, we're just going with the fifth fret here. But whatever your index finger note is on the G string, that's the major key that this would work for. So let's go ahead and identify that. What is that note, fifth fret on the G string? We have G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C. So if we play this scale on the fifth fret, we, are, we can use it for the key of A minor, that was our first root note, or we could also use it for the key of C major, that's our second root note. So if you're playing uh, with you know, a jam track or maybe playing with other musicians and they tell you to play in the key of A minor, you know it's right there on the fifth fret. If they tell you to play in the key of C major, it's also right here on the fifth fret. You can use that same scale for A minor or C major. And now that applies to anywhere on the guitar as well. So instead of playing in A minor, let's say we wanted to play in B minor. All we would have to do is line up that first note of the scale over a B note. So we know that that's an A already. The sixth fret would be an A sharp. The seventh fret would be a B. So if I play my scale starting on the seventh fret, I'm now playing in the key of B minor. That scale on the seventh fret could also work for a major key, whatever the uh, note here on the seventh fret of G is, that's the major key that it could work for. So let's identify what that note is real quick. G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D. So if we play that same scale pattern, on the seventh fret we can play in the key of B minor, and it will also work for the key of D major. Now you could play that whole scale no matter what key you're in. Just because the major root notes down here on the G string doesn't mean you have to start there. That's just how you identify what key it's in. So you could be in the key of, uh, if you're on the seventh fret, you're playing in the key of D major, or you're playing in the key of B minor. Let's do a couple more examples. Let's say we wanted to play in the key of G minor. Well, we just have to identify, we have to find a G note somewhere on this low E string. So we have open E, F, F sharp, G. So now if we play our scale right here starting on the third fret, that will work for the key of G minor because we lined up our minor root note over a G. This scale will also work for whatever note that is, the, the index finger on the G string. So that's G, G sharp, A, A sharp, which could also be called B flat. So if we play this scale on the third fret, we're playing in G minor, or it could also be uh, used for the key of uh, B flat major. And this same principle will apply anywhere on the guitar. So if you have to, or if you want to play in any key, you just have to, have to ask yourself, do I want to play in a minor key? If so, you just find the, the root note here on the low E string. Or if you want to play in a major key, you find the root note on the G string. And then you just play that universal scale pattern. So let's do one more quick example. Why not? Let's say we wanted to play in the key of E minor. Well, we just have to find uh, an E note on the low E string. So we have E. We don't want it to be an open note, so we're going to keep counting. We have open E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D 
D-sharp E. So from way up here on the 12th fret, I'm playing in the key of E minor. That could also work for whatever this note is, the index finger on the G string. So let's figure out what that note is. That's our major root note. G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G. So if I'm playing on the 12th fret, that scale is in the key of E minor, or it could also be used for the key of G uh, major. So that is your one universal scale pattern that can be moved anywhere on the guitar. All you have to do is identify your minor or major root notes, whichever uh, key you want to play in, and then line up that scale over those root notes. Now, if you want to take this a little further, check the description. You'll find more scale patterns, but this same exact principle will apply for those other scale patterns as well. And ultimately, you can learn all five of these scale patterns and start connecting them and all that good stuff. But if you're just starting out, I want you to just focus on this one scale pattern, start moving that around to different keys, uh, and see if you can identify those root notes. Let's go ahead and move forward and talk about some improvisation tips. All right, guys, so I'm just going to go back here to our fifth fret scale in fifth position over here as our example. And let's just talk about... Uh, some tips and uh, and some tricks and some things to keep in mind as you're actually improvising. So with a scale, the way you can kind of think about this is like an artist with a canvas. So if you were to uh, go out and, and make a painting, you'd, you'd start with a blank canvas, right? And you can think of that as your scale. Your scale is your canvas that you're going to use to create with. And the notes of the scale are kind of like your colors. And so as an artist, your job is to take that canvas and take those colors and make something out of it. So we don't have to play the scale in that order. In fact, we don't want to. The finger pattern is just telling us uh, the notes that are available to us. It's telling us the canvas that we have and the colors that we have, right? So that's our uh, what, what we have available to us. But we want to then start kind of putting those together in creative in different ways. So as you're going through this scale, you can feel free to basically play these notes in any order. Um, and, and start to get comfortable just kind of playing the notes in different orders, different combinations. And, and again, think of it as like colors or a canvas. You're putting them together in your own creative way. The scale is simply kind of the options that we have available to us. And then the other tip I'll give you in terms of improvising is that we want to put these notes together um, in the same way that you might put a sentence together. So think of it as you're speaking a sentence or a phrase, but with your guitar. So what I can do is take these notes and put them together in sentences of maybe three, four, five notes. And I'm trying to create some kind of musical phrase or sentence with the notes of the scale. Right, so there's a little sentence. There's a little phrase. Right, and to do different phrases, we can do notes in different orders, we can do different rhythms. There's all kinds of possibilities there. But I think it helps to just think of this in terms of uh, a canvas and paints and putting those scales together or putting those notes together in phrases, in sentences. So you don't have to be Jimi Hendrix or Eddie Van Halen to, to do guitar solos. You can keep those phrases and those sentences really simple. Right? Those are perfectly fine, <laughs> really nice little phrases for solos or lead guitar, and you don't have to get super complicated or complex with it. But we just want to put those uh, notes together in the form of a sentence, and then of course we end our sentences with periods, right? So in musical terms, that can just be a little rest or a little break. So we have a, a sentence and a little break. Another sentence sentence 
with those little pauses in between. So those are some great thoughts and concepts that you can kind of take with you and start improvising. Obviously you can get more complicated too. You can add in bends or hammer-ons or pull-offs and all that kind of good stuff as well. But the key takeaway here is that we have a universal scale pattern. We have two root notes within that scale. The index finger low E string and the index finger G string and you can move that scale anywhere. You just have to line up those root notes with whatever key you want to play in and then you simply uh, put together some musical phrases within that key. And again those those phrases can be played no matter where you're playing this on the guitar. So whatever key you're playing in doesn't matter. You move that scale anywhere on the guitar, you identify those root notes, and you put those uh, those scales into phrases or sentences. All right, guys, great job. All right, guys, there you have it. There is the one scale that you really need to know to be able to play in any key, anywhere on the neck. Uh, just to kind of summarize what we talked about there, we uh, learned the scale pattern. We learned it in terms of a finger pattern, not frets, because we want to be able to move that to different frets uh, to change keys. Then we uh, identified the root notes of that scale. There's one minor root note and one major root note. And to play in any key, you just have to identify what key you're in and then line up those root notes over the correct uh, note on the guitar, over the same note as the key you want to play in. And then finally, we talked about some tips uh, for improvising, how to put those notes into sentences and how to create some cool melodies and riffs with those. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Check the links for uh, some uh, additional uh, resources. I've put together some jam tracks for you in the uh, description below this video. You can find those links and again you can find uh, some other resources for learning additional scales as well. Alright guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I really appreciate it and I uh, hope you learned uh, a little something from this lesson today and that you can start having fun jamming with your scales. I'll see you next time. Thank you.